Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at RAF Fairford, about 90 miles outside London for the Royal International Air Tattoo, one of the world's leading gatherings of air power leaders as well as aircraft from around the world. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS. And we've got with us Major Aaron Gambit Stevens uh, a, uh, of uh, the 56th uh, Fighter Wing at the Luke uh, Air Force Base with the U.S. Air Force uh, Heritage uh, Flight, uh, 1600 hours. Uh, obviously, you've got some T-38 time, but you were an F-15C driver uh, doing the really, really cool air superiority mission. And now you've got about 200 hours in the F-35 uh, Alpha, uh, and you're an instructor pilot uh, there. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. We're excited to be here at the, uh, the world's largest military air show. Um, it, it really, it really, really is amazing, and I want to kind of get your impressions on that. But first, um, talk to us a little bit about the Heritage flight because you know it's it's really cool. Every time you come to the UK, you see the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. I mean, right now as we tape this, uh, the Lancaster Avro Lancaster bomber, uh, legendary from World War II, is uh, turning its engines, and uh, the flight has got Spitfires in it and Hurricanes, and and obviously uh, 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 the Lancaster. Talk to us about from a U.S. Air Force Heritage flight standpoint. What are the array and variety of aircraft that you guys? Uh, operate and what's the mission of the unit? Um, you know, given that it was con it was it was founded a couple of years ago, to sort of you know do a similar sort of thing in an American context uh, as as the Battle of Britain flight does here in the UK. Sure. Yeah. So the U.S. Air, Air Force Heritage Flight Foundation uh, has been around since 2010, and what it is is the demonstration of U.S. air power through history. And the great thing about again being here in England with all the Battle of Britain stuff that you talked about and just the heritage of. Uh, England in, in and of itself, we've got the opportunity this time to actually have a Spitfire and a P-51 in the formation uh, with the F-35. So you'll see Dojo out there today uh, ripping through the sky with those uh, heritage flight uh, portions there, and it's going to be quite, quite the incredible thing to see here in, in England. And, uh, and tell us a little bit about how the F-35 and the unit and that heritage and all plays together as well, because um, even though you're heritage flight, you're also flying the 35C in these demonstrations. Talk, talk to us about how such a modern aircraft kind of also plays into that whole historical uh, time frame that you're shooting for. So it's great to have the F-35A uh, specifically here at the air show, and it's obviously the cutting edge, world's premier fighter that's out uh, now, uh, along with our allied partners and friends out there, uh, everybody flying that. So to see that flying with the technology from the World War II era, and you see it all go from you know the steam gauges and the stick and rudder uh, skills to what we have now of uh, mostly a flying computer that does all the sensor management or the sensor fusion that it's capable of to make it the world's premier fighting machine. It's, it's quite the incredible sight to see see it flying through the sky with those different different kinds of airplanes. You're, you're coming from, a, a, which is very, very high praise, coming from you as an F-15C guy, uh, which which really is, is you know, the F-22, you know, is the only thing higher than a 15 when it comes to the air superiority and air dominance mission. But talk to us a little bit about the 35, very different airplanes. Uh, you're still uh, very direct control. You know, folks who fly the 15 always call it a very honest airplane when it comes to flying it. The 35 is a very, very different airplane, no less honest, but it's a very different airplane. Talk to us about the different the flying qualities, the systems differences that differentiate those these two aircraft. Sure, yeah, so the F-15C, you're right, a uh, great air superiority fighter. Uh, the F-35 is as well a great superior air superiority fighter. Uh, the great thing about the F-35, though, is that obviously it's multi-role, so we're able to do the air-to-air -air mission as well as the air-to-ground role. And when you combine that and uh, that mission and integrate it with the F-22, uh, it's really the unbeatable threat out there uh, that we bring to the fight. Uh, and then, obviously, as we integrate the partners uh, and our allied friends into that mission, uh, then it's really the unstoppable force uh, that we come to bring to the fight. As far as the different qualities with the two airplanes. So the F-15, like you said, uh, it talks to you, uh, but that's the great thing about the F-35 is it talks to you as well. And what I mean by that is as we're putting it, putting it through its paces, both aircraft capable of 9Gs, is it talks to you as it jet slows down, you get a little more what we call buffet. Uh, so you feel the aircraft uh, slowing down as it kind of shakes a little bit is uh, what I mean by the buffet piece of it. So uh, both aircraft very capable in the air-to-air -air realm. Uh, and then again, just the F-35 bringing the air-to-ground role uh, and mission to the fight. As far as how it flies uh, in general, both aircraft were really built to fly very easily so that we can manage all the systems. The thing with the, uh, the F-15C, again, air-to-air -air only, but you're manually doing a lot of that air-to-air -air stuff. With the F-35 and all of its new technology uh, and capabilities, it's doing, it's helping you out, uh, and what we're doing is managing some of the sens sensors, but also as well, uh, also manually doing some of that stuff. Uh, you talked to the electric aspect of the jets, so there's a little bit of autonomy 
in the, the F-15, but again, a little older technology. It's got the big control stick right in the middle uh, of the aircraft, whereas the F-35 has the little side stick on the side that doesn't move too much. And like you said, it's, it's a lot of uh, the electronics flying the jet. So uh, we, we give the input to the jet, and then it's going to move the flight controls as it needs to to give you that normal uh, aircraft feel as opposed to the F-15 where it's pretty much the direct uh, control stick inputs that you're given to the jet and flying the jet that way. Um, and that's right, because Viper drivers will be more, a little more familiar with the whole side stick action sure. uh, and the and the, and the Barco lounger uh, seating position. I'm just kidding uh, uh, about that. Um, t talk to us a little bit about training. Um, you're obviously an instructor pilot. Um, you're at Luke. There's the international cadre uh, there for the F-35 community, as well as others. Obviously, the most one of the most important training bases, uh, you know, in the nation and certainly the world. What are what are the keys? You know, as now you're having a direct accession pipeline, so there are folks who are going right to the 35 as opposed to being 16 guys or 15 guys or 10 uh, 10 guys who are going into the community. Um, talk to us a little bit about what's you know when when guys are coming to the aircraft and and and, and gals are coming to the aircraft. What what are the top three things they need to know in order to be successful in it? You know that that sort of maybe differentiated. Like what's the mindset difference they need going into an airplane that is fundamentally different? It's it's a flying really flying multiple supercomputers, and folks are still sort of plumbing what it is they're going to do with it. But just about it changes just about everything. So so tell us, you know what what kind of mentality do you have to go into this airplane with? given that it's very, very different from anything that's ever come before it. Sure, the mentality, simply put, is an aggressive mentality. You gotta be ready to uh, go out there and fly, fight, and win every day. And part of the training that we do is you gotta study hard, you gotta prep, and you gotta be ready for every event, whether it's an academic test that you start out taking, or if it's the simulators that we move to next, and then eventually fly on the jet. So it's, it's still, uh, obviously, uh, giant flying machine that can put you in a bad spot real quick if you don't take care of yourself out there. So part of that comes with the preparation that goes from the very get-go of the onset of officer accessions once you move into the Air Force all the way through your pilot training program. So yeah, we're moving into uh, our third B course now in the 61st Fighter Squadron alone. So when we get the, the new the new students, they don't have the, the habits that they bring over from uh, guys like myself from a previous fighter jet coming over with habits that we had in that fighter jet uh, that we need to break in this this uh, this new aircraft with a different switchology uh, that we had from our previous jet. These guys are fresh into the pipeline. They haven't seen this before, so it's the first thing that they're learning uh, of the Nintendo generation, if you will, as they've been playing buttons uh, games uh, as they've grown up through the years and they are just dominating uh, as we expected they would as they moved into the pilot uh, the f-35 training program uh, as you said um, you know they're they're like sponges right I mean that this is this is the new thing that they know and they're they're soaking up every um, every bit of it how does the international aspect um, and having that international student cadre uh, change improve give different flavor you know what are the what are the, you know what are what how do you see as as an instructor pilot you know the benefits of having this sort of sort of unified international community um, that's that's training together for a jet that that um, you know that they will be able to fight together in even though we hope that you know nobody's got to do that. Sure. Well, one of the reasons that we're here at the air show is just to improve the interoperability between the allies and the partners that we have out here. Uh, at the home station there at Luke, you know, we've got uh, a lot of the partners that are uh, already flying with us day in and day out. And what that brings to the fight is obviously the knowledge that they have from their different combat experiences, as well as us with our combat experiences, to be able to bring that day in and day out to every single training mission that we do, whether it's in the sim, whether it's flying, or even in the academic just discussion uh, in the bar at the end of the day, guys hanging out and just talking about the sorties and or previous experience. So uh, all those different experiences come together. It not only builds our foundation, increases our foundation, but also the students' foundation as well. Again, with the new guys coming in that haven't seen the combat piece or even been deployed anywhere at all, they start to hear these stories. So when they actually get downrange for the first time, they've already heard about these things, and it's not the first time that they're actually hearing about it. So uh, having the partners and allies there flying with us every day is, is absolutely great, uh, and it helps us further down the road, like you said, in the uneventful or unfortunate circumstance that we do actually uh, reach the point where we need to go to combat with the jet, then we've all been there, done that. We will see guys that we knew and trained with at Luke uh, in a different part of the world, and that's the great part about the interoperability piece that we uh, have with every day. And, and then uh, when you uh, uh, make uh, Air Chief uh, and one of your opposite numbers, you guys can be like, hey, remember that time when we were at uh, Luke on the 35? That's right. Uh, hey, because uh, I know you're going to do it. You said, you know, to sort of sift fact from fiction on the jet also, right, get that hands-on experience. Um, 
the airplane was a long time in gestation. Um, we're, uh, we're redesigning it as we were building it effectively, and the earlier jets are different from the later jets, as, as we know, given that the production run, run is going to be a very big one. And for a while there, um, was the availability rates were low, and they were interfering with the, with the training pipeline. Talk to us about availability rates a little bit. Where are you guys now in terms of being able to do those cycles reliably, getting butts into those seats in order to train them and get them out, because the airplanes are flying off the line now at a much, much higher rate. Sure, yeah, they are, like you said, flying off the, the line there, what I'd call full speed ahead. The jets are uh, coming off of there. So, you know, we're, we're building pilots as fast as we can. The jets are showing up and uh, it's not a problem. You know, the, the jets are arriving and, and we're ready to rock and roll with the jets as they continue to come off the line. Obviously, they're building them here and it, uh, basically the main manufacturing, the large portion of it here and uh, not here, but in America and Italy and uh, Japan as well. Uh, so, you know, we have, have again, our, our partners coming together to uh, put these jets together and it's it's bottom line it's not a problem right now and uh, right so availability rates are up uh, from from that standpoint so as a trainer it's not something that's a challenge at all for you guys correct yeah so we're we're, we're flying the lines and we're we're putting the students through the pipeline and getting them uh, getting them out there to the the combat air forces um, and so talk to us about what happens after they finish uh, the curriculum um, how many people get cycled back in to do instructor jobs how many folks are going back out there uh, talk to us a little bit about the educational uh, foundation that you guys are also growing around the jet and standing up around the jet sure yeah so part of the standing up the the basic course with our guys straight out of the, the pilot training pipeline is uh, if all you do is keep adding middle-aged guys to the the group then obviously we don't have the experience level that we need through all the ranks so that's part of the b course going through is those guys will go through the b course then we'll send them off to the combat air force for a little while uh, maybe three years maybe four years something like that and then they they may have the opportunity to come back to luke as instructors uh, and then continue to build that foundation now coming back with uh, the the combat air force experience not necessarily combat but uh, being out there and going to the the different exercises and different AORs throughout the world uh, to bring that experience back as now our first couple of B course guys and gals and uh where, uh, where were you originally from and what attracted you to join the United States Air Force? Uh, originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, really just going to air shows like this. So uh, as, as a kid, for as long as I can remember, uh, my dad was taking, taking me to the air shows, sometimes my mom too, but uh, definitely my dad always had the, 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 the take, let's go to the air show, and we'd go out there and hang out all day, get sunburnt, slash uh, hopefully not too sunburnt, uh, and definitely got the bug there just seeing the fighter jets fly around and the other aircraft at the air show to the point where, uh, cliche if you will, but uh, you know the childhood dream come true, and uh, to see the the future of the F-35, uh, what it is now, uh, literally in the present, is uh, is is really exciting for me. And uh, have you been to uh, Fairford before? Is this your first uh, air tattoo? So this is my first air tattoo. Yeah, I was based out of RAF Lake and Heath, flying the F-15C for three years, but uh, unfortunately didn't make it out here. Uh, but uh, it's I'm glad that I had the opportunity to come back in a different jet now, obviously. But uh, it's quite quite the sight here at the uh, air tattoo. Major Aaron Gambit Stevens of the 56th uh, Fighter Wing at Luke Air Force Base, uh, F-35 pilot, former F-16C. Sir, thanks very much. Really enjoyed the conversation, and best of luck. Uh, best of luck with the program. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it.